how to raise NAD naturally. It's been several years since I've talked about this in my previous video, so I went back into the research and I updated my list of natural ways to increase this energy molecule. What you're gonna see here is what works and what doesn't work Let's take a look at those things now. Now, if you're seeing this for the very first time and you're saying, what is NAD? Well, it stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's an important molecule that's found in every cell in your body, and it is used to do a variety of important things, including making ATP, that's your ultimate energy molecule. It helps repair DNA, and it also activates enzymes that help protect our cells from stress and aging. And this connection to aging is why so many people are interested in this, because it appears that we make less NAD as we get older. The NAD theory of aging goes like this. As we get older, we tend to make less NAD. This in turn leads to dysfunctional, unhealthy mitochondria, which in turn leads to cell damage, inflammation, disease, and aging. So the idea is if you could replenish or maintain cellular NAD levels, this may go a long way to helping you live longer and have a better quality of life. Okay, so let's talk about how to raise NAD naturally. And let's begin with NAD boosting supplements. The most popular supplements to achieve this are nicotinamide riboside, NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, and another supplement called Elysium basis. These are all supplement precursors to the NAD molecule. In other words, when you take these supplements, NAD levels go up. And before we go any further, I want to call attention to nicotinamide riboside because it is actually a form of niacin, which is also called vitamin B3. Now, I've covered the research on these supplements in other videos and I'll pin them to the comments below so you can see that research for yourself. And to save you a little time as you sift through those videos, between those three supplements, nicotinamide riboside, nicotinamide mononucleotide, and Elysium basis, if you were going to pick a supplement, I would choose either nicotinamide riboside or Elysium basis. And that's because the research on NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, is actually pretty lackluster in my opinion. Yes, NMN will raise NAD, pretty much all the studies show this, but as far as making people healthier and living longer and having a lower risk of chronic diseases, I just don't see it. And if you want to see the research on NMN and what happened when people took it, again, I'll point you to the videos that I've pinned below. And while we're on the topic, what about NAD supplements themselves? These are dietary supplements that actually contain the NAD molecule. These are not the same thing as NMN and NR and Elysium basis because those products are actually precursors to NAD. NAD supplements actually contain the NAD molecule, which in theory, you would think that that would work even better because you just take it and it should raise your NAD levels. However, there is a problem with these supplements and it is this. It appears that the NAD molecule is too big to significantly penetrate the cells of our body. So if you are taking NAD supplements, I think you're wasting your money. Again, I'll point you to those videos I've done previously so you can see the research on NAD supplements. So much for those, let's talk about one method to raise NAD that may be in your kitchen right now. Yep, I'm talking milk. It turns out that nicotinamide riboside was first discovered in milk. So every time you drink cow's milk, you're getting a little bit of nicotinamide riboside. That said, the amount of nicotinamide riboside in milk is minuscule compared to what is found in dietary supplements. For example, you'd have to drink about a thousand glasses of cow's milk to get the equivalent of 300 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside. That said, if your philosophy is less is more, then maybe this is an option for you. Next up is niacin supplements. Recall that nicotinamide riboside is actually a form of niacin vitamin B3. In this clinical trial you're looking at involving five people with mitochondrial problems and 10 healthy people, slow release niacin was said to cure NAD deficiency. Niacin supplements taken at a dosage of between 750 and 1,000 milligrams per day increase niacin in the blood six times higher than it was previously after just four months of use. As an added bonus, niacin also reduced by about 50% the fat in the liver of those who were dealing with mitochondrial health problems. Niacin supplements were also found to improve muscle strength in these people as well, and that effect was seen to be most profound in those who had less than optimal functioning mitochondria. Keep in mind, if you're going 
going to experiment with niacin that very high doses may not be so great for your liver. And also there is the niacin flush to consider as well. If you've ever experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. It's not a fun experience. Let's not forget that niacin is also found in a variety of foods ranging from turkey and chicken and salmon. So by eating niacin containing foods like those you're seeing here, you're also bumping up your NAD levels as well. So niacin is also known as vitamin B3, but what about the other B vitamins? It turns out that vitamin B1, thiamine, vitamin B2, riboflavin, and vitamin B6, peroxidine, all help support your natural NAD synthesis. And while these vitamins don't directly go to increasing NAD, they do work in the background to make sure that all the processes run smoothly. You could certainly take a B complex supplement or you could naturally support these processes by eating foods that contain B vitamins. And to help you out with that, here's the approximate amounts of vitamin B1, B2, and B6 in some commonly consumed foods. Speaking of foods, or rather not eating foods, what about fasting and intermittent fasting? Some point to this study as proof where mice did a 24 hour water fast resulting in an increase not only in NAD, but also in the key NAD producing enzyme, NAMPT, which is great, but it's a mouse study. There's also this paper where people undertook a 58 hour water fast. Results showed that fasting increased nicotinamide levels in the blood between 1.4 and 1.7 times higher than they were at the beginning of the fast. Now, I like that this is a human study. However, it does have a major drawback in my opinion, and it is this. There was only four people in that study. Next up is an amino acid called tryptophan. It turns out that tryptophan is a raw material that our bodies can use to make niacin, and niacin in turn can be used to generate NAD. As proof, there's this paper where healthy women took up to five grams of tryptophan daily. This resulted in a significant increase in NAD metabolites, which indicated that the amino acid was indeed being used to generate NAD. And since we're talking natural ways to raise NAD, remember you can also get this from foods as well, like these foods. Another method that is popular in some circles is not meant for the faint of heart, I'm talking ice baths. When I delved into this, I found one human study that appears to offer some evidence that exposure to cold temperatures may raise NAD. Here's that study. 24 middle-aged and older adults were exposed to a two-hour whole body cold exposure session at a temperature that was enough to make them start to shiver. Results? cold exposure increased nicotinamide levels in the blood by eight times higher than they were before. And this cold exposure also lowered tryptophan levels as well. Remember, tryptophan goes to help support NAD synthesis. So if cold works, what about being exposed to heat like in a sauna? So the research on saunas raising NAD is not exactly where I'd like to see it yet. Some will actually point to this paper as proof, but it's basically a petri dish study where cells were dunked in a 107 degree Fahrenheit water for two hours, 42 degrees Celsius. But because we're not just clumps of cells, this study can't prove that sitting in a hot sauna is gonna raise your NAD levels. Some evidence suggests that you could support natural NAD synthesis by maintaining a healthy body weight and blood sugar too. In this study, researchers reported that in identical twins where one was overweight, genes in their fat cells that make and protect NAD were much less active than in their leaner siblings. There's also this paper which appears to show that the gene that makes NAMPT, that's the key enzyme in NAD biosynthesis, is reduced in people who are overweight and have insulin resistance. Further driving this home is this clinical trial where 1,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside taken daily for three months failed to improve mitochondrial function in skeletal muscle when it was given to overweight men with insulin resistance. Take home message, if you're taking supplements like nicotinamide riboside, they may not work as well in people who are overweight or have insulin resistance. So if you fall into either of those camps, you might want to address those issues first before starting on NAD supplements. On a separate topic, here's a study showing that alcohol is not a friend to NAD. NAD synthesis. In this study, which looked at people getting liver transplants, it was reported that the livers of people with alcohol-related liver disease not only had lower NAD, but lower precursors of NAD, including nicotinamide riboside and niacin, compared to normal livers. While this study can't prove that avoiding alcohol preserves NAD in the liver, it does tell us that people who drank enough to require a liver transplant still had lower NAD in their livers even after six months of sobriety. And that brings us to what I believe is the very best way to raise NAD. And one of the things that makes this method so great is that it requires no dietary supplements whatsoever. It's completely free. What is it? 
exercise as proof. Here's a study where 10 weeks of strength training performed just two days per week skyrocketed muscle NAD levels by a whopping 127%. This simple exercise program literally rejuvenated NAD levels to that of younger people in their 20s. Additionally, sirtuin activity jumped by 15% and there was also indication these people had healthier mitochondria too. And I want to make this clear, these people were not weightlifters or athletes by any stretch of the imagination, rather they were middle-aged men and women. Here's another study showing that a single bout of either high-intensity interval training or moderate bicycling raised NAD in blood cells after just one hour of exercise. Want more proof? Here you go. Here's a study involving 57 people in their 30s and 50s showing that three months of either strength training or aerobic exercise was able to restore muscle NAMPT levels to that of younger people. Fact, no researcher has yet published a clinical trial in humans that compares side by side the NAD boosting effects of exercise to that of supplements, including NMN, nicotinamide riboside, niacin, or others. Ask yourself, why do you think that is? The proof is overwhelming. The very best way to not only raise NAD levels naturally, but also reduce your risk of chronic disease and have a better quality of life is to do physical activity. Researchers, prove me wrong. Publish that study. Go on. I'll wait.